In my first attempt to analyze minions in PoE, I looked at them from a very bare bones perspective. I thought of them as entities you summon to kill things for you, but now I see that PoE's minions are more like party members that act in cohesion to destroy everything in their path. In that overview, I made a couple of statements that were kinda questionable. 1. It takes a lot of maintenance to play minions in PoE. 2. You cannot have a lazy playstyle with minions in this game. And 3. You do not have control over your minions. As pointed out by the comments in that video, and as I found out in the latest league I've been playing, all three of these are actually a non-issue. Flasks can be automated with instilling orbs, while skills can be auto-triggered with gems like cast on damage taken or cast when stunned. You can link it with another gem, for example Molten Shell, so it acts like an automatic oh f button. Another thing that I did not really pay much attention in my first solo minion build was minion composition. Turns out, it matters a lot what kind of minions you have summoned. As pointed out, SRS does not play nice with usual minion builds. So this time, I decided on Summon Stone Golem, Enemy Guardian and Ray Spectre. More on those later. Furthermore, I mentioned PoE lacked the ability to control minions, and even though it's not solved as smoothly as in last epoch, you can still use a gem called Predator Sport, which will give you a skill to target an enemy. And then, minions that are socketed together with that gem will prioritize that target and be aggressive. On the other hand, you can also have a defensive minion, you can use a gem called Meat Shield, connected to a specific minion, which will then make that minion act as your bodyguard. I'm sure I will have a couple of misses with this minion overview as well, as I now see that you can simply understand PoE's minion in just one league due to its depth, but I think it's way more accurate and gives pretty good outline of what minions in PoE are. So, motivated by the comments in the previous video and the fact that I had nothing better to do, here's my second attempt at understanding minions in Path of Exile. To quickly set the stage again, I did not follow any build guides, but kinda winged it as I played the game. However, I did research a couple of pointers like which minions play nice together, how does animate guardian work, how do specters work, how do I stop my character from dying by everything that looks at it. Having those questions in mind, let me start with Ray Spectre. Ray Spectre has a pretty cool dynamic to it, as it matters what specters you summon. This minion can give buffs to your other minions, or they can debuff enemies. You can have specters that boost your party's damage, attack and cast speed, or the ones that boost crit chance, or the ones that reduces enemy defenses, and so many more. Moving on to Animate Guardian. Animate Guardian minion has so much more to it than I originally thought. At first, I just thought you throw an armor set to summon it, and you're done. But now, I found out that it actually matters what gear you use to summon your Animate Guardian, because most of the stats on that gear apply to Animate Guardian as well. And as you can expect, those gear affixes also apply to you and your other minions also. You can give Animate Guardian gear with ally stats in order to boost your party. So Animate Guardian is not just another offensive minion you summon to kill monsters, but a component in your minion army. To round it up, let me quickly touch on how minion gems and damage works. In my previous attempt, I focused on gems that explicitly stated minion keyword. Turns out, minion damage can be scaled with other gems as well. For example, you can use gems like melee physical damage and increase melee minions damage, or multi-strike to proc multiple hits. On top of that, there are some pretty cool affixes on items that can completely change how your minions behave. I got gloves that require no corpses to raise zombies, but zombies are then also treated as corpses, that is, you can explode them with corpse explosion. This can be annoying if you want to keep your minions at max all the time, because you then have to resummon zombies over and over again, or you have to be careful where you explode those corpses. The last question I still failed to answer, but I did get some indication as to why my character dies frequently. I feel like inadequate defense stats in PoE are way more punishable than in any other RPGs I have played. Even though I had my resists at 75%, or some even capped at 90%, I was still getting one tapped in a lot of cases. I found out that HP, HP regen and armor should help with this. This might sound like an obvious answer to you, but what I'm trying to emphasize is that in D4 and last epoch, I never really cared about the defensive stats that much, other than resists. They would kinda sort themselves out with levels and gear, while in PoE, you actually have to pay attention to when your defenses start to drop off and you have to very accurately solve them. I want to end this one up with a look at Last Epoch and Diablo 4. I don't want to beat the dead horse with opinions about Diablo 4 and specifically D4's minions, but I just want to point out one thing. The more I play other ARPGs, in this case PoE, the more I see the flaws and shortcomings that the veteran players of this genre pointed out ever since the game came out. You may say that it's fine for the game not to be as complex. 
and to some degree you'd be right. But even so, I can't help but think of Diablo 4 as being in early access, and these seasons that are coming out as patches that will eventually lead up to 1.0 release called Vessel of Hatred. On the other side, there's Last Epoch, whose minions and game in general already has so much depth to it. So I wonder, how is Diablo 4 supposed to compete with this? Is it really going to have such prevalence in this quote-unquote casual market to keep it going its own way? I guess we will see in around 6 to 12 months.